So today, this is our agenda. Um, I'm going to be hearing, handing it off to Caroline in just a moment, but um, this is obviously our welcome and introduction, and then Caroline will take over. As I said, I do expect this to take about an hour, and we will leave time at the end for questions and answers. Caroline, I'll hand this off to you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Maria. And thank you, everyone, for being here today. I really appreciate that. First of all, I would like to say that I'm very excited to be here today to talk about a subject that I'm so interested in, and I hope you will understand why during this webinar, okay? But please allow me to briefly introduce myself. My name is Caroline Figueiredo. I'm Brazilian. I live in Rio, Brazil. I don't know if you know Brazil, but I'm a civil engineer and I have a master's in environmental engineering. I almost done with my PhD. I will finish my PhD next month. I'm very excited about that. And my research has been on the creation of beam based solutions, technical solutions to achieve sustainability in the construction industry and in the built environment, okay? And besides my experience as a civil engineer and as a researcher, I have the pleasure to be a lecturer at EIT. So I conduct lectures and tutorials for higher education and VET programs, okay? And we can talk more about that later today, but we have many courses related to the BIM methodology and other tools and techniques that we will briefly discuss today, okay? So, of course, we have limited time here, and this methodology, you will understand this today. The BIM methodology is comprehensive and a robust technology, so there are many things to discuss. I will try to show you guys the main characteristics, the main features, okay? But if you have any questions, please use the chat box. I will try to see the questions during the presentation, but as Maria said, at the end of this presentation, we will have the Q&A session, okay? So uh, ask anything you are curious about, and it will be a pleasure to discuss this topic with you guys, okay? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Is everything okay with my audio? People are saying that. Yeah, okay, perfect. Sorry. So let's continue. Great, guys. Thank you very much. Perfect. So let's officially start this presentation by discussing the name of this methodology. So as you can see here in this image, BIM is an acronym that stands for Building Information Modeling. So analyzing the methodology's name, we can imagine the differences between this methodology and the traditional approach typically used in the construction industry. Okay, because unlike other methodologies, BIM focuses on modeling the information about a building project rather than just creating technical drawings or even a 3D visualization of our building. It's so much more than that. The idea behind BIM is to create a digital model that contains all sorts of information and data about the project. In other words, we can use BIM to transform this 3D model, the, this 3D building, into an accurate database that centralizes all the relevant information about your project, okay? So basically, we can say that the core of this methodology is the information. Information will be the key here today in our discussion, in our presentation. Because when we talk about BIM, we are talking about creating a real prototype of our building with all the relevant information about our project. It's not only about the model itself. We can insert information about estimates, 
design notes, uh, material cost, the schedule of the project, sustainability aspects of the project, for example, that's my case. As I said before, my research has been focused on achieving sustainability in the construction industry, but this is only one possibility, okay? You can use this methodology for different purposes, and I will present some of the possibilities here today for you guys. So I really like this explanation of the BIM concept, and I think it's a good way to start this presentation. Uh, this explanation was written by Charles Eastman, or Chuck Eastman, who was one of the pioneers in BIM research. Actually, Professor Eastman started to discuss this concept in the 70s. We will talk a little bit more about that today. But only with the advancement in computer technology was it possible to implement these ideas in a computer program, okay? But let's read um, this explanation about, um, about BIM. And this explanation is from the BIM handbook. If you are interested in studying uh, this concept and to understand the whole methodology more deeply, I really encourage you guys to find this book uh, this is an important publication regarding the BIM methodology, okay? And we can understand BIM um, like this. Building information modeling, or BIM, is one of the most promising developments in the architecture, engineering, and construction industries. With BIM technology, one or more accurate virtual models of a building are constructed digitally. And let's stop a little bit here and let's understand this part of this text, okay? We are talking about creating a 3D model, a virtual model of our building and construct this building in a digital way. Why can we talk about that like this? Because since we can insert any kinds of data and information within our 3D model, we will transform this 3D model in a real prototype of the real building. In this case, we can test, for example, different construction materials. We can test different possibilities of construction methods. We can analyze many, many things in our building before going to the real construction site and really construct the physical building. So that's the idea. The idea is to construct the building digitally, but for that, of course, you need to insert more and more information. The more information and data you insert in your virtual model, the more realistic this model will be, okay? So we will discuss more about that today, but unfortunately, many professionals think they are applying the BIM methodology in their projects, but they are not considering the insertion of information in the 3D model. That's the whole idea of the methodology, okay? That's why in our courses in EIT, we have um, uh, a course specifically related to BIM, okay? And in this course, I am the lecturer of this course, and we explain not only the theoretical aspects of the methodology, but we also apply these concepts in real projects. We create a case study together using different software applications, okay? But it's very important to understand the whole concept of the methodology before we start to use a specific computational tool, because the point is not to create only a 3D model, but to insert all kinds of information and data to centralize all this data and to carry out different kinds of building analysis, building simulations. And in this case, we can consider that we are really constructing our building before the real construction, but we are doing this in a digital way to, cha uh, to change many, many things in our building before the real construction to find the most suitable solution for that specific project, okay? That's why we are talking here about constructing the building digitally. So let's continue this explanation. These models, these 3D models generated 
by using a BIM-based solution, they support design through its phases, allowing better analysis and control than manual processes. And when completed, these computer-generated models contain precise geometry and data needed to support the construction, fabrication, and procurement activities through which the building is realized. So we are talking about here, not only the development and the creation of technical drawings, okay? So when we think about designing and creating the technical drawings for a building, we are talking about geometry. We are talking about geometric data. But here, using BIM and the full potential of this methodology, we can insert any kind of data. So at the end of this process of creating the 3D model, you will have a computer-generated model with precise geometric and non-geometric data, everything centralized, okay? And of course, when we think about something centralized, so all kinds of data about the building, since the beginning of the design stage until information about the demo, the possible demolition of the building because you can insert information regarding the whole life cycle of the building okay since the beginning since the extraction of raw materials to create the construction materials until the demolition of the building so all the information will be centralized and of course this centralization will avoid miscommunication, and many other problems regarding your project, okay? You can test everything. It will be so much easier to find uh, necessary information to, to take a decision, etc. Okay, so that's the, the whole idea of the BIM methodology. And another thing that is important to point out here, I don't know if you guys already work with BIM. Can you answer me this? This, this is a, an important question. Have you already used the BIM methodology in your own projects? Yes? Oh, great. Perfect. No, never. Yes. Okay. So not yet. Only modeling. Great. So yeah, that's a good point because sometimes we use a specific software application based on BIM, but only with this focus on modeling, okay? And the idea of our courses here in EIT is to understand the full potential of BIM. So, of course, it's important to model our building and to generate the technical drawings, the blueprints, etc. Of course, this is essential in a construction project. It's um, we don't need to discuss that. It's the first step, but we can do so much more than that. And that's the idea to understand the full potential of the methodology and to know different software applications that we can use to assist us in this process. But of course, after a course um, in EIT, for example, you will choose the, the best, the most suitable solution for you. You will use the BIM methodology for a specific purpose, okay? In my case, for example, my focus is on sustainability aspects, but I know to use the methodology for other purposes too, and I can change the purpose if I need in a specific project, okay? Great, SketchUp, AutoCAD, yeah, so we will talk about that now. So many people imagine that the CAD methodology was created and then after a few decades, maybe, the B methodology emerged. But it was not like that exactly. And we will see this a little bit more now. So I don't know if you are aware, but I imagine that many people here are professionals, students, or researchers associated with the construction industry. So you already, you probably have used AutoCAD, SketchUp, or other soft, software application like that. So all these software applications are based on the CAD methodology. When we use this acronym CAD, CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. So what is the main idea here? In the past, 
we didn't have technology to use computer to create the technical drawings. So what was the solution at that time? To use drawing, uh, drawing boards and paper, pencil, rulers, squares. So we were focusing on manual drafting. And of course, with the advancement of the technology, we now have computer programs based on CAD that allow us to create all these technical drawings using technology, okay? So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design because we will use the computer to assist us in this process of creating technical design. But what is the problem here? We are just using technology to do the same thing we did before in the past, creating these technical drawings, but now in an easier way, in a quick way, okay? Because we are using technology, of course. But we continue to just focus on creating drawings, okay? And that's the opposite idea in BIM. We are not focusing on creating drawings. Actually, when you use Revit, ArchiCAD, or any software based on BIM, you will focus on creating the 3D model, and then the 2D plans, the technical drawings, will be generated automatically, because the main focus is to insert information within your 3D model. And of course, you can use this model throughout the whole life cycle of the building. So for example, we can start to use this during the conceptual design and then evolve this model until the detailed design. You can carry out different kinds of building analysis, building simulations using the same uh, 3D model, okay? You can also generate different kinds of documents related to your project in an automatic way, okay? So it's very common to imagine that we first had the CAD methodology and then we started to create uh, an innovative methodology called BIM. But actually the timeline was not exactly like that. And this is a curiosity, um, but it's important to discuss that and I will explain why. So in 1957, Dr. Patrick, known as the father of CAD, wrote Pronto, an early commercial numerical control programming language. And this language was essential to allow researchers and developers to create computer programs focused on uh, the construction industry. That's why Dr. Patrick is known as the father of CAD, okay? Some years later, in 1974, Professor Charlie Zistema, I already talked about him today, so he was one of the pioneers uh, discussing this concept of BIM. So since the 70s, he was discussing this idea, okay? So Professor Charlie Zistema, together with a team of scholars, creates the BDS concept. So what is BDS? BDS stands for Building Description System. Is this another methodology? No, this is exactly BIM. But over time, they decided to change the name of the methodology because, of course, it's better to put the name information since this is the, the key of the methodology, the core of the methodology. So they decided to change the name of the methodology for building information modeling, BIM, okay? But since the 70s, researchers were discussing uh, this idea of creating a way of centralizing all data and information about a construction project in a way that allow all practitioners, all stakeholders involved in that project to communicate and to test different alternatives, okay? But we didn't have technology to create a software application like Revit at that time. So some years later, in 1982, Autodesk launched AutoCAD. Maybe many of you guys already used this pro, uh, computer program, okay? So AutoCAD was the first 2D design CAD software made for PCs instead of mainframe computers, okay? So engineers, architects, designers started to use AutoCAD and then, of course, 
other programs started to appear in the market, okay? And in 2000, Revit, which is a built information modeling software for the architecture, engineering, and construction industry professionals, was launched. And in 2002, Autodesk, the same company of AutoCAD, Autodesk purchased Revit, which allowed more research, development, and improvement of the software. Okay? So I need to point to highlight a specific thing here before we continue this discussion and this presentation. The construction industry has a reputation for being slow to adopt new technologies when it comes to improving its processes, unfortunately, okay? Because compared to other industries, construction tends to take longer to integrate innovations. For example, when we talk about autom automation, artificial intelligence, uh, virtual intelligence, other modern technologies, unfortunately, the construction industry tends to take so much longer to integrate these new concepts, okay? And of course, this is due to several factors. So the complexity of construction projects, we know that uh, sometimes we need specialized equipment, sometimes it's so expensive to implement a new technology, okay? So we can, we can see worldwide, it's not only in Australia, it's not only in Brazil, it's worldwide. Many construction companies continue to rely on traditional methods and tools, okay? Despite the potential benefits that modern technology could offer, for example, in terms of efficiency, cost effectiveness, safety, sustainability, and so on. And unfortunately, this happens with BIMS. So yeah, I can see some people uh, commenting about that. Yeah, the cost, the whole design process. So of course, there are many, um, many factors that can cause this. But it's important to understand that because it's our responsibility to try to change this, okay? So uh, if you are a civil engineer, an architect, after this presentation, I hope you start to think how you can implement all these ideas. Sometimes it's not possible to implement everything at the same time because of um, the cost. And we know that modern technology sometimes is so much more expensive, but we need to change it to try our way of thinking about our projects because Sometimes we think about BIM as an innovative and new solution, a new methodology in the construction industry. But guys, researchers have been discussing this concept since the 70s. In 2000, Revit was launched, so 24 years ago. And nowadays, many professionals continue to use AutoCAD, SketchUp, and that's okay. They are great solutions. But nowadays, we have more opportunities to test different solutions, to achieve sustainability in our projects in a simple way, because you will see that uh, there are many easy ways to create our 3D model and to test different alternatives in some seconds, okay? Because the BIM methodology allows us to do that, to test different solutions, to test different construction methods, before going to the construction stage, okay? So we need to try to change our mindset about that because BIM is not an innovative, of course, this is an innovative solution, but BIM is not only the future of the construction industry, BIM is already the present, okay? And that's why I really like to discuss this topic because I use BIM in my daily routine, in my research, in my work, and... It's great to see all the possibilities, okay? And we have many things to discuss. Unfortunately, we only have one hour here, so let's continue. It would help for government-funded construction projects, for sure, for sure. So we can see that many countries were trying to invest more on this. In Australia, there are some uh, laws about that already. In Brazil, it's an... It's in... It's infancy, but people are discussing about that, about creating 
this obligation of public projects being based on BIM, okay? And things are evolving. But of course, as professionals, our job is to understand this idea, to understand, to, to discover how to use a specific solution, a, a specific computer, um, computer program based on BIM, but also understand this possibility because if you change from AutoCAD to Revit, but you continue focusing only on creating technical drawings without inserting more and more information, you will be using the BIM methodology, but only maybe 10% of the methodology, okay? So that's why it's important to have this discussion we are having here today, okay? In Jamaica, not yet. Yeah, unfortunately, it's an embryonary discussion, um, and that's my point. <laughs> uh, we already have software applications based on BIM since 2000, but we continue to focus on preliminary methodologies, traditional approaches, okay? And it's okay, they are great, but we have more possibilities in the market nowadays, and it's important to, to discuss that, okay? So moving on, I tried to summarize the main features that a BIM-based tool should have. So if you start using a BIM software, know that you can benefit from this process. And there are many other, many other possibilities, okay? I tried to summarize the main features here in this slide. So first of all, design and visualization because the BIM process includes multiple visualization tools. So engineers and architects can see what the building will look like in its final form and can see, for example, I don't know, how natural and artificial light will behave in the structure, okay? You can use the solar analysis and rotate your building to think, okay, maybe it's better to put this room here Maybe here I will um, improve the use of natural light, okay? And improve the thermal comfort of the occupants and minimize the electricity use, okay? So there are many possibilities. We can test various solutions for buildings. We can present a complete special view of the building. So it's amazing when we think about design and visualization, but it's so much more than that. We can also think about quantification and documentation, okay? So as I said before, the focus will be on creating the 3D model, okay? So in our courses based on BIM here in EIT, our focus is, first of all, we will discuss so much more deeply all these, uh, these possibilities, okay? Because here we only have one hour. But then we will apply this in case studies. So we will create case studies together using Ravage, Navsworks, Dynamo, and other solutions, okay? And we will focus not only on the design aspect, but also in improving the decision-making process of our project, okay? And one part of this is this process of quantification and documentation, because when you insert all kinds of data about your project within your 3D model, you will have an automatic and accurate quantification of materials. So that's the first point. When you use AutoCAD, SketchUp, it's, no, it's common to see professionals doing like that. You will create the technical drawings in that computer program, and then you will write your reports you will create your schedule, you will create a spreadsheet in other programs. So you will use Microsoft Word to, to write your reports, you will use Excel to create a spreadsheet with the, the quantification of the materials, for example. But it's very common to have problems and errors in this process because each part of the project is in one different place. OK, so it's very common to, OK, I need to update my drawing. I need to update the technical drawings. Oh, but I forgot to update the list of materials. And now it's not exactly, it's not accurate. OK, in BIM, it's totally the opposite. 
you will insert the information within your 3D model. And if you change something in the 3D model, all the information will be replicated and will be updated in an automatic way. OK, so you will always have an automatic and accurate quantification of materials. And yes, yeah, someone is asking if BIM will create um, the, the quantity of materials. Yes. So you will focus on creating your 3D model and then you can generate um, a schedule, um, a report with all the quantification of materials. OK, of course, for that, you need to insert information, but I will show an example later today. OK, but you can have automated budget, the documentation of all information everything will be centralized and connected okay so this is great um to to use that and finally collaboration and compatibilization because when we use a beam solution and again you can use different computer programs okay the idea is that i'm talking about not a specific computer program but the, the theoretical aspect of BIM, and then we will see uh, possibilities that you can use and that are available in the market, okay? But when we talk about collaboration, it's because all stakeholders can collaborate and work on the project at the same time. And of course, it will minimize a lot of communication failure among the different professionals. OK, so you will have a multidisciplinary participation incorporated where everyone has a global understanding of the project. OK, and you can check, for example, if there are overlaps, conflicts, errors, omissions, you can do the uh, the clash detection. OK, so you will test and the program will tell you if there is any problem with overlaps, conflicts uh, among all the disciplines, OK? So sometimes a professional will focus on uh, the architecture discipline. Another professional will do the electrical project. Another one will do the, uh, the air conditioning project, OK? And then each person can work at your place, at your room, but you can work in real time, OK, in cloud using the same software application and you can see the other disciplines in real time. So that's why we can talk about collaboration and this multidisciplinary participation incorporated in the project. OK. It's related in that different disciplines can work on the same model in version. Yes, exactly, Sunday. That's the, 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 the idea here, OK? So in Revit, for example, there are different ways of, uh, of working collaboratively, OK? So if you have access to internet, you can do this in real time. But if it's not possible, you can save the file in your computer but you can use a central model okay to be the host of the other disciplines and we discuss a lot about that in our course in eit okay um there are different ways of course with internet it's easier and many companies do like that so for example i will give a personal example here i work with people from australia and some people from brazil okay um, I was in Australia last year. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, I think it's okay. Sorry, I think it's my internet. So I I can I can work with people in different countries or sometimes in different cities because I work with people here in Brazil, but they are not in Rio, my city, and we can work in the same project with no problems. Okay, uh, of course we. We schedule some video calls to discuss about our to discuss our projects, but in our daily routine, we can focus on our part of the project and we can check what other people are doing at that time. Okay, so it's it's great to work like that, and it, it's easy. It's not something so difficult or, or so different from the traditional approach. The thing here is that we need to change our mindset 
and our way of conceiving construction projects, okay? So yeah, I think uh, with this image, we can sum up, okay? And to understand the differences between CAD and BIM. So for example, in this, of course, uh, let me point out something here. Of course, there are CAD solutions that focuses on uh, 3D modeling, okay? We have AutoCAD 3D, for example. So, uh, of course, this example here is from AutoCAD 2024. So, this is the, the new version of AutoCAD, but this is the version uh, with this focus on creating 2D drawings, okay? But even when you are creating a 3D model, a 3D visualization using CAD, it's only about geometric data. You can't insert information about time, about cost, about sustainability, about the maintenance of the equipment, etc. Okay, so let's compare both images here. If you want to, to create a wall, for example, here we have a wall, okay? What do you have to do? You will create two parallel lines, okay? And these lines will represent a wall of your building in two dimensions, okay? So that's the idea. At the end of the day, it's only a drawing. It's only a set of lines, points, and solids, and geometry, okay? Representing something, okay? On the other hand, when we think about Revit or any other, so this, um, this screenshot is from a project of mine in Revit, okay? But that's the same idea in other computer programs. I have this wall here. So I selected this wall in my 3D model, and now I'm ed editing the information about this wall. So I can put different layers. So for example, I have here nine different layers, okay, in this wall. And I can insert which kind of material I will use in each layer. What is the thickness of each layer? If this is a structural material or not, okay? And many other uh, information. So for example, here, you can see the total, the total thickness of this wall and also the resistance, the thermal mass, and you can insert more and more information, okay? So, it, of course, if you are using a BIM solution without inserting information, at the end of the day, you will have only a 3D visualization of your ability. But you have the possibility of insert all this data regarding your project, okay? And of course, it will depend on your purpose. So for example, my focus is on sustainability projects. I try to create more sustainable construction projects, okay? So I will insert a specific kind of information in my project. I'm, I'm not uh, curious about other kinds of information, but the more information you insert, the more realistic will be your virtual model, okay? So that's the main difference between the traditional approach used in the construction industry and the BIM approach, okay? And another example here regarding the project documentation and the information, because it's also important to highlight the quantity and the quality of information generated during a construction project, okay? So when we utilize traditional methods, that's the idea here, the red line, okay? We will have a specific amount of information at the, at, at the beginning of the process, okay? So we will have the scheduling process, then the planning process, the building process, the management of the building, okay? But by utilizing traditional methods, when teams move from one phase to another in the project, some information from the previous phase is lost. And I imagine you know that, okay? We create many reports, many schedules, many spreadsheets, many technical drawings. And when you go to the, the next, the following stage, you, you lose 
many a huge amount of information and you need to insert and to create more documentation okay on the other hand the BIM methodology allows the establishment of a continuous flow of information so it's continuous you don't need to delete or to start all over again okay because every stage of the building process is digitally documented so it will go from early planning and design until the construction, operation, maintenance, and final recycling, okay? You can continue to insert information. So we will see this today too. I, I brought an example for you guys, but we can create this 3D model to assist us in constructing such a building, but then, during the operation and maintenance phase of the building until the demolition of the building you can continue to use the same virtual model the same 3d model and continue to insert information about the operation phase for example okay so you will not lose the information the the documentation you will continue to provide more and more information to your project if you want so okay so that's the main difference here And before we continue, just a reminder, BIM is not Revit, okay? You might be wondering why I would show you this image, since the idea here is to understand what the BIM methodology is, not what BIM is not. But for those who don't know about that, Revit is an important computer program based on BIM, and it's very famous, very, very popular, worldwide okay i use revit a lot in my job okay but this is the critical point that i want to demystify at this webinar if you leave this webinar knowing that understanding that i'm more than happy okay because that's the main point today we don't have many time and you can see that the methodology is very comprehensive but even for you guys that are not familiar with the concept of BIM, or but you guys are professionals or students or researchers associated with the construction industry, you must have heard this acronym before. And most likely you've also heard about Revit, but please don't confuse BIM and Revit. They are not the same thing. It's, a, it's essential to understand that BIM is not a specific computer program. But why is this important to point out this year? Because many people associated with civil engineering, architecture domain, the construction industry in general, they believe that knowing how to use Revit means applying BIM to their projects. But that's not true. BIM is so much more than a specific uh, technology. It's a complex design and construction process that help civil engineers, architects, designers to create better buildings, okay? So that's the point here. The BIM methodology is a new way of conceiving construction projects. There needs to be a change in behavior and thinking among professionals for the BIM methodology to be fully applied in construction projects, okay? But Revit is a program based on the BIM methodology, okay? But actually, there are dozens of other BIM-based computer programs. And I will show you this image for you guys to understand that, because there are many examples, okay? Of course, many professionals here in Brazil, in Australia, you can you guys can tell me about your reality in your country. But here in Brazil and in Australia, it's very common to choose to work with Revit because this is one of the most used BIM based uh, tools in the world. OK, and actually, this is a very complete software that allows users to do different types of building analysis, building simulations. And of course, there are there are many interesting modeling tools in Revit, too. OK, but there are several other tools focused on BIM modeling. For example, ARCHICAD, which is also a very robust and complete software, okay? But there are many others. In fact, 
this is up to the user. The most, the most crucial point that I want to discuss with you guys is that no matter which software you choose, only if you understand the whole meaning of BIM, will you entirely use the computer too. In other words, I can use Revit or ArchiCAD or Nexworks only to create technical drawings for my building and stop with this. And in this case, I will not be using even 10% of the potential of these programs. Okay, so that's the key to understanding this um, and to focus on the name of the methodology, building information modeling, okay? So only uh, for you guys to know a little bit more, um, in our courses in EIT, we use Autodesk Revit, okay? So I really like this software application. Uh, many people here said they already used uh, this software. And here in the ribbon, you can see that there are many possibilities. You can create architecture, structure, steel, precast, uh, map systems, and many different kinds of projects, okay? And here in this drawing area, you will create your 3D model, okay? And here in the properties, you can insert all the information and you can test different possibilities, okay? You can also, I don't know if you can read this, but here in the add-ins, you can um, download a specific plugin or add-on to assist you to do a specific kind of building simulation, okay? So we discussed a lot about that in our courses in NIT. And we also use Autodesk Nevsworks, okay? Which is a great, um, a great um, software application, not only for clash detection, okay? So in, in this example, you can see the clash detection, okay? We see two elements, uh, overlapping, okay? So the, the program will allow you to check this, okay? But uh, we can also use this for analyzing construction sequencing, okay? So in our course, for example, we create the schedule of our project and we all upload this schedule to integrate this into the 3D model, okay? So we can integrate, we can connect the 3D model with um the schedule of our project for example you can use a schedule from ms project primavera there are many scheduling programs available in the market and we can use these for analyzing construction sequencing okay and in our course uh, we also discuss dynamo dynamo is great i don't know if you already heard about that but Dynamo is a visual programming language for Revit. So you can ask me, for example, oh, you were talking about inserting any kind of information. But if I decide to use Revit and there is no space to insert a specific kind of data that I want. So in this case, it's not a problem of the methodology itself. This is a technological issue, okay? Because the program that you chose to use doesn't allow you to insert that kind of information. But the main idea of the BIM methodology, the theoretical concept, is that you can insert any kind of data to centralize everything. That's why Revit, which is a great software, that's why I love to use Revit, they allow you to to program, to create a code using Dynamo. So Dynamo is a visual programming language for Revit that can help a lot to improve, uh, to improve productivity and many other things in a BIM workflow, okay? So the idea is that, for example, here, I created uh, a code. So the, we, we say that Dynamo is a visual programming language because you don't need to, uh, to create a code, for example, using Python, C++, etc. You will create these nodes, okay? And you will connect the nodes and then you will run the code and Dynamo will do all the activities that you put there in your 3D model, okay? 
So there is a button in the ribbon of Revit uh, named Dynamo, and you can go there, create your visual program, uh, program, okay? And then when you run this program, Dynamo will do everything in your 3D model, okay? So now you can do anything you want. You can connect this with an Excel file, for example. There are many possibilities, and we also discussed that in our course, okay? So the course I'm talking about is the Professional Certificate of Competency in Building Information Modeling, okay? So this is the symbol of Dynamo, and that's the idea. You will create your visual program, your visual code, and then all the, the tasks will be done in your 3D model in Revit, okay? And now let's talk about uh, BIM dimensions, because understanding that we can insert different kinds of information in a BIM model, it seems clear that a BIM model can be used for different purposes and use cases. So specific parameters can be added to the, to the existing information contained in a BIM model based on the project stage, the project requirements, okay? And these predefined additions can be described as the BIM dimensions. So first of all, we have the 3D BIM, which is the basic dimension of BIM. So as we already discussed, we will insert graphical and non-graphical information to create 3D models and distributing that information in an accessible, traceable, and transparent data sharing environment, okay? At the end of the day, you will have a data-rich, intelligent, and parametric digital representation of the facility, okay? 3D BIM is commonly adopted for enhancing decision-making by reducing the amount of work involved in evaluating various alternatives. And there are many benefits of using 3D BIM. Reduce the errors by the design and construction teams, reduction of construction material waste, improved coordination, for example, and also the reduced time to create drawings and revisions due to the parametric design. And what is parametric design in Revit or in any other BIM-based solution? Parametric design is the creation of a digital model based on a series of pre-programmed rules or algorithms known as parameters, okay? So here you can see the interface and an example of a project made in Revit, okay? So uh, this is the Revit interface and we will use parametric modeling in an automatic way because what is the idea here? The relationships among all elements in a project will enable the coordination and the change management, okay? And these relationships are created automatically by the software. So if you change something in a 2D view, for example, the software will immediately determine what is affected and reflect this change, this modification to any affected elements, okay? So that's a fundamental characteristic of BIM, is the ability to coordinate to change and maintain consistency at all times. You do not have to intervene or to update all the drawings or all the reports every time. When you change something, the BIM-based tool will capture the relationships and will propagate the building chains. And the result will be the reduced time to create the drawings and the revisions due to this parametric design, okay? So if I change something here, for example, if I decide to change the position of the window, here the window will be, uh, will be modified automatically at the same time, okay? So that's the idea. If you insert a new door, this new door will appear automatically in the quantity uh, of material, okay? So that's the idea of parametric design. Everything's connected. And that's why uh, all the documentation generated will be more accurate and automatic, okay? We also have the 4D dimension, which is the process of inserting a timeline and scheduling data. So in this case, you will have your project evolving over time 
and you use this to find the constructability of technical choices as well anticipate sequencing issues in collaborative team meetings. So if you insert time data, you are working on uh, the fourth dimension of BIM. On the other hand, if we are talking about inserting cost data into the 3, 3D digital model, we are talking about the 5D BIM dimension, okay? 5D BIM has fostered new and potential improvements in terms of efficiency, quality, and precision during cost management processes. Because traditionally, the cost estimating is done manually, since the budget analysis are based on 2D documents produced with the help of CAD tools. Now, using a 5D BIM model, we will facilitate the visualization of predicted and actual costs of a project over time, with real-time notifications of cost overruns, okay? We also have the sixth dimension of BIM, which is my favorite, by the way, because 6D BIM is the process of considering the sustainability aspects associated with the BIM, the building. So, as I said before, you can use BIM for different purposes. My focus is on sustainability, so I normally use the sixth dimension of BIM. But if it's not your focus, not a problem at all. You can use the 5D beam, the 4D beam, or any other dimension that you want, okay? The idea here is to understand all the possibilities. But of course, you will choose the most suitable computer solution for your case, for your team, your company, your type of project, and also the better dimension to work. You can work with all dimensions at the same time, You've, if you insert all kinds of information within your model, or you can choose to work only with one or two or three, maybe, dimensions, okay? But when we talk about the 6D beam, we are talking about analyzing, for example, energy and water consumptions of the building, the environmental impacts generated throughout the whole building life cycle, the impacts caused on the inhabitants, so in this case, we are talking about social impacts, okay? And the use of this BIM dimension assists professionals in green building planning for necessary local approval. And only one observation here, because of course, this is uh, my focus in my research, so I, I love to talk about that. So I put this image here, because when we talk about 6D BIM, many professionals talk about that focusing only on environmental aspects but this is a misconception okay sustainability is not only focused on environmental aspects but it's based on a, on three different pillars okay so we need to focus on environmental aspects of course and this is very important for us because we are professionals associated with the construction industry and construction is responsible for a huge amount of environmental impacts worldwide. So it's our responsibility, it's our obligation to try to minimize environmental impacts in our projects, okay? And you can do that in an easy way uh, using BIM, okay? But it's not only about environmental aspects. If I decide to create a building only using green materials, but everything's so, so, so expensive, my client will say, okay, it's impossible for me to pay for this project to construct such a building, okay? So we need to find a balancing approach where we can pay equal attention to all three pillars of sustainability. We need to achieve environmental sustainability, but also to consider economic factors and to consider social aspects too, okay? So sometimes the best solution for me here in Brazil will not be the same solution in Ghana or, I don't know, in Australia or in any other country, okay? So we need to consider our community, our society, our city, the resources that are available in our place, okay? And that's why it's important to balance all these aspects. And that's why I use BIM as a valuable tool in my research to achieve sustainability, because that's a, a way of centralizing all this data, okay, and carry out different kinds of sustainability analysis to improve the decision making of my projects, okay? 
Finally, we have the 7D BIM, which is the process that enables professionals to keep track of critical asset data, such as asset status, warrant information, technical specifications, and maintenance and operation manuals. Okay? So, in this case, this dimension is related to facility management. It's the idea of continue to use the same 3D model after the construction stage. You will continue to insert information during the operation of the building, okay? So you will use BIM as a way to achieve the facility management, okay? And you can insert any kind of information about different components of your building, the frames, installations, the energy performance, until the demolition of the building, okay? And another important thing to, to tell you guys is that, uh, of course, uh, the BIM dimensions are very important. And there are some standard dimensions discussed in the literature. So if you, go, if you Google it, you will see many discussion about 3G, from 3G BIM to 7G BIM, okay? But in the literature, other three dimensions of BIM are already being discussed and there will be undoubtedly more dimensions in the coming years because there is not a limit, okay? You can increase this number of the dimension of BIM depending on the needs of the construction industry, okay? So now the literature, the researchers are already discussing about uh, the eight, nine, and 10 dimensions of BIM, okay? So it is related to safety, so the prevention of accidents in the work field. Also, lean construction. This approach tries to manage and improve the construction processes with minimal cost and maximum value by considering customer needs. And also, industrialized construction, which has been considered the 10th dimension of BIM, okay? But this number will continue to increase depending on the needs of the construction industry, the researchers, etc. So, for example, if you find a specific kind of information that you want to insert in your model and there is no dimension for that, you can create a new dimension, okay? Of course, uh, it's an easy way to say you need to publish papers and to discuss these with other practitioners, but that's the way new dimensions appear in the literature and in the market, okay? And there are different advantages of using BIM solutions. So here I divide this advantage into different stages of the project. So regarding the pre-construction stage of a building project, we can test different project alternatives in a quickly way, okay? We can also analyze the costs, human resources, energy, acoustics, lighting, impacts, etc. We can improve the decision-making process, as I already said. We can work collaboratively without a loss of information among the stakeholders. And we can correct design interference before the construction stage, okay? If you continue to use the BIM methodology during the construction stage, you will have a constant monitor of your project process um, in real time, okay? You will have a safer construction with hazards predicted in advance. If changes need to be made during the construction work, the project can be easily updated because we have the parametric modeling, as we already discussed, okay? So modifications can be tested on the digital model, and then you go there and change this. Uh, after testing this previously, you can go there to the construction site and apply this modification, okay? And we can also use the BIM model linked to virtual reality to help monitor the work. Okay, so that's a great idea of integrating the BIM model with virtual reality, okay? Because this technology allows construction professionals to view a 3D model of the building design and to track the progress of the construction in real time, okay? So the idea is to, to make it easier to identify potential problems and make necessary design changes before construction is completed. OK, and when we use BIM after the construction stage, for example, if we are focusing 
On the seventh dimension of BIM, we are focusing on facility management, as we already discussed. So in this case, you will have project evaluation made quickly, okay? As all information related to all phases of the project is centralized in the same digital module, decisions will be made in other phases can be audited and lessons applying to future projects can be generated. And finally, the B module can be fed with information regarding the use and maintenance of the building so that the digital module can be used as a tracking tool. Of course, there are many other benefits of using BIM, okay? This is only an overview. And as I already said, we can use the BIM methodology throughout the whole life cycle of the building. For example, in my research, my focus is on sustainability. So I insert information since the raw material extraction, because I wanted to understand the aspects related to the construction materials to be used, okay? So I collect data about these materials and I insert these materials um, to have everything centralized, okay? So since the raw material extraction until the demolition and the disposal, reuse or recycling of construction materials and components, okay? And to finalize this presentation, I think we are almost out of time. Sorry for that. Uh, but I will show you very quickly some real world projects that were based on the BIM methodology for you guys to have an overview about that. Okay, so this bridge, the Rand Salva Bridge in Norway, was constructed. This is a 634 meter long cantilever concrete bridge. Okay. And this bridge was constructed without drawings. It is based solely on 3D beam modules. 95% of all information is transferred to the contractor with IFC files. IFC stands for Industry uh, Foundation Classes. This is a type of, uh, this is a file format using uh, in the beam domain, okay? And this is non-proprietary. So even though you are using Revit, Archicad, software applications from different companies, you can open this file in different software, okay? This is the idea of open BIM to, to guarantee this interoperability among stakeholders, okay, in the project. And they use the parametric design, so... 70% of all objects were generated like that. And the design team is located in four cities across four countries because they use this located in four cities across four countries because they use this idea of working collaboratively in cloud in real time using model sharing. Okay, so this project is incredible to discuss. I think I put more more images here yeah and there was there was a significant reduction in change orders because they used beam models as a basis for producing drawings okay and you can see that this bridge has a very complex and slender geometry okay very heavy reinforcement combined with post tensioning cable uh, makes certain areas very challenging to design, okay? But since they used a 3D model based on BIM, it was so much easier, okay? So they used 4D BIM and 5D BIM in this project, okay? They used parametric design, okay, to enable them to revise and to change everything, okay? And... Um, the main point here is also that the drawings are often country specific. So for example, here in Brazil, we have some technical standards that we need to follow to create technical drawings. In Australia, in Ghana, in South Africa, in Spain, there will be other technical standards, okay? So when we talk about drawings, this is so much country specific. But here they use the 3D B model, okay? And this is more universal to make cross-border collaboration easier, okay? 
Here we have another interesting example because this is not about a building. They used the BIM solution to create this support, this transi transition tower, okay, of power lines. But this transition uh, tower is in the form of the symbol of the city. In this case, it was the figure of a lion with an eagle uh, on it, okay? And a total of five, more than 5,000 parts were produced, assembled, and welded to form these elements, okay? And the, the most interesting part here is that the test assembly was not conducted at the factory. Instead, it was carried out using BIM-based tools. So they simulated this assembly process using the BIM software, okay? Instead of doing this at the factory. So we can see more feed here of the support of the power lines in the form of the symbol of the city, okay? This is very beautiful. And I already brought some examples of case studies that I used in my research, okay? So you can read more, more about that in this paper, okay? That I published in the Journal of Building and Environment. But the whole idea is that I created the 3D model and used this 3D model as the material database, okay? So I inserted in many information about these materials regarding environmental aspects, social aspects, and economic aspects. And then I used other techniques. So in this case, I used the life cycle sustainability assessment methodology and also the multi-criteria decision analysis technique to find the most suitable list of materials for that specific building. But my point here is that even though I, I was using other methodologies, other techniques, to improve sustainability, BIM was a valuable solution, a valuable uh, source for me to centralize all information and to start my project because I need uh, to create the 3D model to continue to um, improve the decision making process. Okay, so I created this database and I created different alternatives of list of materials and carry out different kinds of simulations to find the most suitable solution considering environmental, social, and economic aspects, okay? And to finalize, uh, this is another project. This is a real-world project. This is related to the Brazilian National Museum, okay? And I don't know if you have heard about that, but unfortunately, this important museum, this important repository of historical and cultural treasures in Rio tragically caught fire in 2018, okay, six years ago. And because of that, we lost irreplaceable artifacts in this museum. And also, uh, we had problems with the structural integrity of the building, okay? And my research team was responsible here in Brazil, in Rio, to create the 3D model of this museum, okay? But in this case, we used the heritage beam concept. So what is this? Long story short, the idea is to use beam, but with this focus on not compromising heritage values, okay? So the idea is to use beam as a comprehensive data set of information about all disciplines but related particularly to the conservation of valuable buildings, heritage buildings, okay? So these are some images of the 3D model that we created using Revit, okay? And then, of course, we, we simulated many things to, to decide many things about the reconstruction of this museum, okay? And yeah, that's the, the idea, and I really think this sentence sums up what a, a BIM workflow is. Build it first at a digital model and see that everything works, okay? You can use the BIM-based tool to create a very impressive 3D visual, visualizations because the tools widespread in the market 
are so good for geometric modeling, but that's still very little. The idea is that you actually build a digital prototype of your building before the construction stage. And in this way, you can test different alternatives for your building and significantly improve your project's decision-making process, okay? So only an example of another possibility is to continue to use the BIM model as a digital twin. So you will have the digital building in your computer and also the physical building constructed in the construction site. And you can, um, you can install different sensors and devices based on IoT, for example, to collect real-time data from the physical building and then you will send this real-time data to be processed in the digital building to predict the data to be managed in the physical building. So you will have two real buildings, but one will be digital and another one will be the physical real one, okay? So that's the idea of creating a digital twin of your facility, of your building, okay? And yeah, you will have a real prototype with all the information centralized in your computer, okay? And that's my, my last slide for you guys today. And I really like this, uh, this text because projects we have completed demonstrate what we already know, okay? If you already use BIM, great. If you didn't know about BIM yet, great too, because now we are discussing this concept, this interesting methodology, okay? And what you already completed demonstrated what you already know. But now we know a little bit more about this possibility. Even if you already use Revit, Archicad, I hope you now understand a little bit more on how to use these to improve more and more your projects and your future projects from today will decide what we will learn, okay? So that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, presentation. I know we have limited time and I passed a little bit, sorry about that, but uh, there are many things to discuss and I hope it was uh, great for you guys. And I'm really glad to be here today. It's a great pleasure. Thank you very much for being here and for your participation. Thank you, Caroline. We're going to um, open the floor for questions in just a second. Um, I just wanted to point out that BIM can be found in these following courses. This will be included in the information packet that we sent to you by email. So please take a look at those. And um, we have some a list of the upcoming courses and their start dates. And um, I'm sending a link for the certificate that everyone wants to receive for attending in the chat here, but also you can scan the screen right here and um, do that by by phone. But you can also just use the link in the chat that I sent. I will leave this up for about 30 more seconds and then we can open the floor for any questions that anyone might have and allow anyone who doesn't want to stay to go ahead and drop. Okay, about 10 more seconds, and then I'm going to move it on. If you need me to paste that in the chat again, just let me know, and I'll be happy to do that. Okay. So Q&A time. Does anyone have any questions for Caroline today? Gustavo, that will be sent to you via email, okay? I don't have a paste of the link for those courses. I don't think, let me just double check. Give me one second. Here's the Are attendance we... code again. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah. <laughs> Great.
Caroline, we have the question, can BIM methodology be used in construction, operation, and maintenance of electrical power infrastructures? Perfect, great question. Thank you very much. Yes, we can use BIM for, of course, uh, here we are focusing on buildings, okay? But we can use BIM for different disciplines and also for infrastructure, okay? That's not the focus of Revit, for example, and in our course, because we need to focus on a specific thing, but then you can replicate and extrapolate the knowledge for other kinds of projects, okay? But the idea of BIM is to, uh, to centralize data and information about any kind of construction project, okay? So we can use BIM to assist us in infrastructure project, building project, a tower system, as you said before in the example, okay? So many possibilities. Uh, the, another question, can BIM be used in marine and coastal constructions? Yes, um, again, the focus is on the construction industry in general, okay? But in, for example, this is not my expertise, so I don't know a specific software application with this focus. But as I said before, in Revit, for example, if it's not possible to develop a specific thing, you can or use Dynamo to, to code and to create this possibility, or you can install different plugins to assist you with a specific kind of simulation, okay? Revit is not the best solution when we think about structural analysis, okay? There are uh, better software applications available in the market with this focus, okay? But Autodesk is an interesting company because they focus a lot on research and innovation. So there are many publications from Autodesk and they are also always trying to understand what the practitioners want to, uh, to implement and to increase in the Revit interface. So I really like the Autodesk solutions because of that, okay? But the, um, the possibilities are endless. Mohammed wanted to know if SCADA is related to BIM. Uh, SCADA, you say about supervisory control and data acquisition, maybe. That's the... Yes, from what I understand, there's not a lot of relationship there, Mohammed. Uh, they're, they're, they're two different methodologies. Yes, exactly. But uh, there are some publications about the integration of these two concepts. Uh, that's not the purpose of this webinar today, but I, I already explained a little bit about the idea of digital twin. So there are some papers in the literature about that, about how to integrate in SCADA and BIM, okay? Um, to produce a digital twin of the building, okay? So that's a possibility, but it's not a direct way of integrating these. They are researching about this possibility, okay? But that's the focus uh, of many papers in the literature. In my case, for example, I use BIM as a primary data source, okay, to construct a digital, build, a digital twin, for example, or to integrate with other methodologies. The idea is that you will have all data in a centralized way. Then you can use this with whatever you want, okay? You can integrate this using programming languages and there are many possibilities, okay? Uh, Gustavo wants to know about books for BIM methodology. I would think maybe more, do you have a recommendation for a book for BIM methodology? Great, so I really like the BIM handbook written by Professor Charlie Zistman. I think it was the first book in my life that I read about BIM. But nowadays there are many publications, not only books, but also great uh, scientific papers, okay? About a specific dimension or a specific purpose of using BIM. So it will depend on your purpose, okay? For example, if you want to use Revit, uh, there are many books about uh, how to implement uh, the BIM methodology and it's fully full potential using Revit, okay? 
So the book will be more related to modeling tools, okay? How to use the modeling tools of the software, but there are great tools available in the market. But the BIM handbook written by Professor Charles Eastman is a great choice to start understanding more deeply the whole theoretical concept behind BIM, okay? Thank you. And then Abdullah asks if uh, BIM can be used in small local construction. Yes, for sure. It's not only for infrastructure or huge projects. Um, we can use this like for a flat house or any other kinds of construction projects, okay? And I also saw some questions about air conditioning. Mm -hmm. In Revit, for example, uh, in the ribbon part of the Revit interface, uh, you can see different modeling tools for architecture and also for structural projects um, and also systems projects. So you will have modeling tools focused specifically on HVAC, okay? So heating, ventilation, and air conditioning projects for building projects, okay? Yeah, and Charles asks, uh, can BIM be used for a whole retrofitted building wherein the building has been mostly changed, additional areas and retrofitting scheme and having them all reflected from the old model of the building? Yes, so it's not the same case, but the example I showed you guys about the National Museum in Rio that caught fire, uh, the focus was on heritage beam, beam. So we were focusing on uh, the conservation of a historic building, okay? But that's almost the same idea of retrofitting, okay? So you can uh, use beam, for example, to compare different stages. You can model your building with the information from the previous stage. And then after all the modifications being done, okay? And you can carry out different kinds of simulations to test possible solutions. Or you can, if your building is already uh, finalized, the retrofitting process is already finalized, and you did this using AutoCAD, for example, you can create a new project in Revit, in ArchiCAD, and put all of this information. Okay, that's uh, of course. I have one observation about that. It's better to start using BIM since the early design stages, because in this way, you will have all information centralized during all uh, throughout the whole life cycle of the building. But if it's not the case, if your building is already constructed, but you want to continue uh, controlling your building regarding facility management, it's a possibility. You can measure everything, uh, collect the data in your building, and then you go to Revit, Archicad, Nevsworks, and you will create the 3D model, not with the focus of using this for the construction stage because the building is already constructed, but you will create the 3D model to continue using this in certain information about equipment maintenance, about retrofit, or any other possibility, okay? Uh, Christina wants to know how big the file will be when you um, save a BIM file, since it's all about Sorry, a project. I, I, like when you, uh, I'm guessing she's referring to, and Christina, you may need to uh, elaborate, when you save the file, like you want to transfer it to other people, uh, how large are those files? Yes, um, that's one huge problem sometimes, <laughs> depending on the, the, the size of your project. Uh, unfortunately, I had when I started to work with BIM, that's not the case if you are a student and you are trying to learn how to create a building project, okay? That's okay. I don't know like the exact size. I don't know what number to, to tell you now. I'm, I'm horrible with computer stuff. <laughs> I know how to use the software, but these details, I don't know how to, to tell you now. But if it's like a residential building, that's okay. If you have a good laptop, that's okay to use Revit, for example. 
but sometimes I work with huge projects. And when I started to work with this in my career, I had to invest in a good computer because this is a robust software and you need to, to use a good computer if you want to create huge projects, okay? But uh, I think it's in the future. If you are still in the stage of learning the capabilities of a software, you will focus on small case studies Okay, and that's okay to use your own computer. Um, I think a couple of these are related, but um, it, which of the BIM is ideal for structural design and is Autodesk Revit the best software for BIM? I think those are related to each other. Yes. So yeah, there is not, um, it's complicated to say what is the best solution, the best software application, because it will depend on many things, okay? Uh, so sometimes uh, you need to consider the user's expertise. If you already know how to use ARCHICAD, continue to use this. That's not a problem at all. But you can start to implement everything that we discussed here today. Uh, this idea of inserting information to use this to improve the decision-making process. But I really like Autodesk solutions because the interface is very similar. So if you're if you are used to using AutoCAD, for example, it will be so much easier for you to learn to use Auto, uh, to use Revit because the one software application is based on CAD, the other one is based on BIM. But the interface is very similar, is very friendly. Okay, and I think it. That's why I chose to use Revit, okay? And I think one important um, point to highlight here is that as an EIT student, you will have access to these software applications, okay, during your course. So you don't have to purchase the, the software to learn how to use, okay? So in, the, in our courses, you will have the access to remote, uh, uh, remote labs and you will be able to to learn practicing everything okay creating the case studies together with the lecture creating your own projects okay so that's a great opportunity for you to learn about the methodology itself but also uh, practice these creating real construction projects okay this is one this one is interesting would would be, I'm sorry, would BIM be able to take in account soil types? Yeah, that's not my my focus, but yeah, for sure you can do that. You can create the topographic surface and you can insert information about that. In my case, when I create the topographic surface, I only insert um, color information because my focus is not related to that. But if you want to insert more specific information, it's up to you and it's totally possible. Um, Byron wants to know how construction managers make use of BIM, considering they are not really designers, but are still an important part of the construction process. Yeah, so there are many possibilities actually. Uh, as I said, we can integrate, for example, um, BIM and virtual reality. That's a possibility. So you will have the designer, the architect, the civil engineer focusing on the design itself, okay? But then you can present the 3D model. You can walk through this 3D model, okay? Using virtual reality tools, for example, okay? Virtual reality glasses, and you can walk uh, through the construction site visualizing how the building will be after constructing it okay so there are many possibilities uh of course it will be more difficult to uh to change or to use revit if the construction manager is not um confident about that and he or she doesn't know how to use the software application but after the design is made you can save these as a video. You can export the report as a PDF file. There are many possibilities. You will continue to generate the technical drawings, the same thing 
that you do using CAD, you will do using Revit, ArchiCAD, okay? I, I was focusing here on the differences between the traditional approach and the BIM approach, but you will, you will continue to have everything you already have, plus this additional of centralizing all kinds of data throughout the whole building life cycle, okay? I see two more questions and then we'll wrap it up. And Caroline, if you wouldn't mind typing in the book that you love the most into the chat, a couple of people have asked about that. Um, so the two other questions, one is, can Rabbit be used in modeling other engineering projects? Yes, um, ah, Rabbit, sorry, BIM, uh, we can use the idea of BIM. BIM is focused on the construction industry, okay? Um, so if it's a construction project, you can use Revit or any other tool. But this idea of centralizing information, if you want to use it for mechanical engineering projects, things like that, you can try, but you will use more drawing uh, tools than creating the real prototype of the system, okay? So yeah, the BIM methodology is more focused on the construction industry for architecture, construction, and civil engineering. Okay, and the last one is something we'll have to discuss behind the scenes, but can we have another lecture focusing on BIM as sustainable tool for construction management? Yeah, so, so I'm yeah, so that's something we'll discuss uh, <laughs> with our team for, for, the, for, the, for the future. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate everybody's feedback and the great questions. Uh, as I said at the beginning, for those that missed it, two business days for this deck to be sent to you. It'll include all the links that we um, talked about here, so you'll be linked to the courses, but at eit.edu.au, you can visit our site if you would like to um, look at our course schedule directly. And then in about four business days, we expect the certificate of attendances to go out, but please be aware that it's one person making all of that happen, so please give her some time to sort that and give uh, at least allow her a week to get that done, okay? Thanks. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. It was a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for attending this webinar and thank you for your great participation. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much for your support today. Thank you, Caroline. Bye now. Bye bye.